They see me rolling. They hating. Hello, dear friends, family, loved ones, haters. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma. It's fantabulous to meet you. I've had this idea cooking in the zesty brain fluids of my cranium for a while and it's it's taken me a long time to arrive at a point where I can actually film it uh, and that's a good thing in this case because this video is going to be my hate comments as book recommendations. So I'm going to be taking a bunch of comments that I've received and turning them into a book recommendation for you. The reason why this took forever to film was that um, wonderfully, thank you, thanks for not hating on me that much, it took a while to garner this many comments that I could use. Not that I don't get weird comments all the time, but I'm talking specifically hate comments because of course on a daily basis I get really weird comments from really creepy dudes. I'm not gonna have any of those comments in this video because newsflash to the creepy men out there. Not only are you creepy, you're just boring. I've seen thousands of you. You have no original work. But before we kick it off, this is a reminder to yourself. If there is hate in your life, why not try being kinder to yourself with Kinder Beauty, who is very kindly sponsoring today's video. Thank you so much. Kinder Beauty is a beauty subscription box focusing on bringing you clean and ethical products. And it was actually co-created by Ivana Lynch, who plays Luna Lovegood which is very cool. Like I mentioned, all of their products are clean, cruelty-free, and vegan. And for $23 a month, you can receive up to $165 worth of products. We're talking skincare, hair care, makeup. So they sent me their December box. Of course, you'll get your own depending on whatever month you ordered, but let's open it up. Also, something I love and that just made me want to work with them so much more is that a portion of their proceeds goes back to animal rights and environmental organizations. Here we have the box. So the first thing that I see, Big Bang. <laughs> it's called the Big Bang. I actually needed a new mascara, so this is great. She's stunning. We have a new beauty blender from Uve. Gorgeous. And this one is dermatologist approved for sensitive skin. Okay, this is the cutest. We have, I think, a little eyeshadow palette. It's inspired by America's Parks. So this one is called Tetan Range, if I'm saying that correctly. Oh multitasking beauty balm melts into skin removing makeup excess oil and other impurities left over from your busy day this is gorgeous i want to know what it smells like last thing i see in the box is this anti-acne sheet mask so if you guys are interested in having a bunch of beauty products delivered to your door that are clean cruelty free you can use my code 50 emmy for 50 percent off of your first box when you sign up for a subscription let's move on to transforming that hate into um kindness all right first hate comment um some of these i had to go way back to find it's it was a journey i've also blurred out i think all of these people's like full username on youtube because i am a merciful god this first one is from ron ron and dear ronald said pretentious reviewer i bet she hasn't read do you even understand the message from this books are you just trying to sound smart period. Thank you for that insightful comment. I hope you had a great day after you typed this. Okay, so let's let's discuss. Let's break it down. Let's see what we can get. Let's see what we can really get out of these comments, out of these criticisms, out of these feelings that people have towards strangers on the internet. Pretentious reviewer. I bet I bet you haven't read anything. You know what? He's right. I've actually never read anything. <laughs> I actually don't even know how to read. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop and, and fact check you right there. Dear Ron, if you go on my Goodreads, you'll see that I've read 911 books in my lifetime. Some good books, some bad books, but yeah, I've read, I've read a couple books in my lifetime. Do you even understand the message from this book? So you know what, sometimes I don't, but sometimes it's not all about understanding the messages. Sometimes it's about the thoughts, the feelings, the messages that unfurl inside of yourself and you're like, oh my gosh, I need to open this email from myself and this email that you open from yourself was all of the feelings you had, the realizations you came to while you were reading a singular book and you've learned something about yourself along the way. I'm gonna flatter myself for a second and um, I am going to say that yes, more often than not, I do comprehend the things that I read. I do have a degree in reading, you could say. Um, are you just trying to sound smart? Well, I'm not trying to sound stupid. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. On a more serious note, let's let's transform this comment into a book recommendation. I'm gonna be recommending to you, based on this comment, When We Were Orphans by Kazuo Ishiguro. This fits perfectly for a number of reasons, and I'm not gonna tell you all of them. This is a detective novel, and our narrator 
is our main character. He tells us that he is a detective and he's been wanting to be a detective ever since he was a child. He's kind of trying to figure out some mysteries, but most importantly in his adult life, the mystery that he's been trying to solve is the disappearance of his parents. They went missing from his life. Um, most people assumed he was an orphan. He has different ideas and so now he's dedicating his whole life to solving what happened to his parents. This is really great because it gets at the core of pretentious, like the actual dictionary definition. Just so you know, I'm not making this up. Ron. It's defined as attempting to impress by affecting greater importance, talent, culture, etc. than is actually possessed. You can kind of apply this air of pretentiousness to when we were orphans, but in a very sad, tragic way. It's about things that aren't there when people imagine that they are there. Uh, it's about people trying to convince themselves of things, convince themselves that maybe they're a certain way, that the situation is a certain way. When We Were Orphans is also set against the backdrop of, I think, the second Sino-Japanese War, so lots of things going on there. But it's also a book that is full of delusions, unreliability, people thinking that they understand something when they really don't, and yes, sometimes people just trying to sound smart to cover up for this vulnerability that there is a gap in in their knowledge, whether that's a knowledge of a date, a memory that's gone missing. Uh, in this case, we're talking about definitely traumatic memories, memories that are covered up by the brain trying to save itself from having to remember something horrific that went on in one's own past. So yeah, I think this perfectly meets all of the criteria. This is one of my favorite books, probably. I think you reach the end of this book and it just it changes everything. It makes you realize that you had no idea what was going on. A lot of people in this book had no idea what was going on and it is absolutely fantastic. So that is the first book recommendation that I'm gonna give you. Let's move on. We're mm, blocking out the haters. <laughs> this next person, I'm just not gonna blur their username because it's just, their username is Wetfart. Wetfart decided it was a good idea to comment, you should buy a Kindle. Save all that wasted paper and space. And by the way, Nice shaped tits. What size are they? Uh, don't know why you're asking me when you could have just asked your mom. Okay, I'm gonna limit myself. That was my one your mom joke, I promise. No more. <laughs> there won't be any more in this video. Okay, how do- okay. So, number one. <laughs> I do actually have a Kindle. I do. What far? You're kinda, you know, you're behind the times. I do have a Kindle. Um, but in terms of all of that wasted paper and space, I live in like a 600 square foot apartment, and if every wall could be filled, behind me with bookshelves like these, I would be quite the happy gal. Um, if you think it's a waste of space, that's that's fine. You know what, I think the real wasted space here is is the hate in your heart. Let me give you the book recommendation because I think that that'll speak to itself for this. So the book I wanna recommend based on this comment is A Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway. This is his memoir, his journal, has been very finely tuned about his time spent in Paris when he was young, when he was pretty poor, when he was writing novels, when he was meeting people like F. Scott Fitzgerald, Gertrude Stein, the like. He describes Paris as a movable feast, something you will always have with you no matter where you go. I've had comments, I've had a lot of comments over the years about people taking a look at how many books I own, making assumptions, saying it's a waste of space, it's a waste of paper, you need to go wholly digital. It's not, for me, it's not about at all where the book is stored because the book is just a physical manifestation of its contents, right? Like the book, the book itself, it's just a body for the soul of the story, much like, you know, you want to argue that our bodies are not, are not really us in the same way that a physical book. Really, if we want to go deep down the rabbit hole, um, nothing behind me really exists. <laughs> is that my argument? No, not really. They're beautiful, they're comfort to look at, but what I'm really trying to get at is that books are a movable feast. You read them and you could burn. You could burn all of the books behind me right now. I would still have them in my heart. You know what I mean? Like when you read a story, you no longer need that physical body of it. You have the essence, you have the story, you have the thoughts, the feelings, the meanings, the connotations, the symbolisms, the way that it's affected your life, the things that you've learned from it. Um, and you're always gonna have that with you, much like how Ernest Hemingway describes Paris as a movable feast, something you can return to time and time again when you need to nourish yourself, even if you're not in Paris, even if you don't have a physical book on your person, it's gonna be something you can pick from, take what you need when you need to take it. Um, and I think it's just such a glorious representation of 
a memory, a time in your life. In this case, I'm obviously applying it to books themselves. I think the physical space that books occupy can't really be wasted because you need that physicality, whether it's literally on a Kindle and in digital space or in, of course, material paper space. Yes, aesthetically, libraries are gorgeous things. Obviously, Wet Fart doesn't think so, but am I gonna take thought seriously from someone named Wet Fart? Probably not. The best libraries are the invisible libraries, and those don't take up any space. And if you've read even one book from your library, you have that invisible library, and it resides inside of yourself. So, Anyway, yeah, okay, I'm gonna ignore the other half, but thanks, I grew them myself. Next up, we have a comment from Pow. Your skin looks too pale. Go sunbathing. By the way, this is one of the few times I watch your video until the end. If you have a long video, split it into parts. We're a little translucent looking today. Uh, Pow, I don't know what you want me to do about it, buddy. I haven't seen the sun for weeks. I live in Canada. It's snowing. It's cold. The sun goes down at like 4.30. I don't know what you want me to do, honey. There ain't no sun to bathe in. But yeah, you know what? Sometimes I have long videos. The miracle of you deciding to watch something is that you can also decide to just click off and stop watching. Or, you know what? Miraculously, your suggestion split it into parts. You can also watch, you can also watch a long video split into parts. So it's like you've created for yourself a number of videos. I do try to have some longer videos, some shorter videos. The majority of your comments is that you guys love long videos, especially if they're long vlogs. I'm of the exact same mindset. The book I'm gonna recommend, the book I'm gonna recommend based on this comment is obviously Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice because this is a book about vampires. They have pale skin and they can't go sunbathing. Also, Anne Rice was not apologetic about how long her series was. Hey Siri, how many books are in the Vampire Chronicles series? Interview with the Vampire. The vampire leased it. <laughs> Computer just started listing them all off at me as if that was helpful. Like, I'm gonna hammer out 15 books, and these people are gonna goddamn read them. And they did. And I am. And I love her for it. This encapsulates the comment perfectly because it has very pale people, and the series goes on for ever um and i'm very very happy about that fact so if you've not read Anne rice let me let me read her to you let me do you the absolute favor this video really reminds me of this quote and sometimes i read my youtube comments and i'm like that's so true Anne rice um evil is always possible and goodness is eternally difficult we follow a vampire giving an interview to this young dude in the 1980s and he's like are you really a vampire and he's like yeah let me tell you about it and he tells him his whole life story up until 1980 it begins in new orleans and it it just possesses so much great beauty, skill, craft. The dialogue is wonderful. The characters are wonderful. This book feels like a gut punch so many different times. Like your organs, it will arrange it. You know what? Every single chapter will just like, all of a sudden you're like laying in a crippled ball in your bed being like, this, this makes me want, this makes me want to live. This makes me want to live my life. It makes me want to scream and cry and laugh. Um, just honestly, a masterpiece. I think Interview with the Vampire is such gorgeous, 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 gorgeous work. It grapples with so many questions and I could go on a rant for forever about this book, but I won't and I will just save you the treat of reading it for yourself. So that is that one. Then we have two comments that I'm going to split into one. These are comments that I get, I don't get them too much anymore, which is nice, <laughs> but I used to get them a lot, a lot, a lot. So these are two that I've seen time and time again, but I'm just going to combine them into one. So the first comment is from Luke. Hi, Luke. How you doing? Thanks for tuning in. Okay, and he said, why major in English? What job will you do? Do you plan on marrying a rich guy or something? And we have this next one, which is from Electro, commenting on, I think, one of my English major videos. Um, that's an awful lot of work for a field you will never get a job in. Okay, so let's break it down, because this is probably like one of the most Im important hate comments. Not a ton of hate in them, honestly, but these are the most important because not only they don't just affect me, they don't really affect me anymore because 
I mean, I'm living the reality of having an English degree. I know, I know what my reality is, but I think for a lot of other people, including myself when I was younger, these are really important comments to talk about, to address, to have discussions about. Because of course the notion in the world, um, one that I used to possess myself, I'm not gonna lie, is that English degrees are useless in terms of getting a job, having any financial value in your life. They're not gonna bring you any of that finance. You know, they're gonna make you lose money. And overall, they're probably one of the most useless degrees you can have. Um, that's why, that's why I was petrified to go into English. I thought I am following my passion, I'm following my heart, but it's gonna end up in maybe a sad place if I do this. Because in my first year, my plan was to go into biology. I tried to force myself into that lifestyle. It made me miserable. I was not doing very well. I had English, I had one English class as an elective and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go for it, come what may. Let's start with Luke. Why major in English? It's my heart and soul. Everything you do is connected to language in some way. Language, you can't leave it. You can't escape it. There's no escape from language, which is horrifying, but also beautiful. I'm not gonna go on a huge rant because I have a whole video coming on like, what the hell can you do with an English degree because it requires so much more. Uh, I think discussion, ex exploration, and devotion than just a silly little answer I can give now, but one of the major things I can point out is that taking an English degree taught me so much about history, people, psychology, even math and sciences in some cases. It taught me how to write, how to communicate my feelings, how to use language in a purposeful way. Where did that come from? It taught me about so many different life experiences. It opened my eyes to um, humanity. I learned so much taking the English degree and that is so valuable to me. But in terms of what job will you do, this is something that's been shoved down my throat since like I started showing a lot of love for literature, studying language, like what the hell are you gonna do? It was asked to me a million and one times and I never had an answer for it until I actually shifted into my English major and I met other people. I met professors who had worked so many jobs before they became a professor. I met TAs who had worked so many different jobs pertaining to an English degree or even not, but the fact that they had an English degree, that their skills at communication and writing, they ended up beating out like other people who didn't have English degrees, who were maybe on paper or in their minds more suited to that job. Actually, the day after I finished my last course, I went on Indeed, which I haven't done in so long. And I looked up like, okay, now that I'm done my degree, what is available to me? Thankfully, I found so many jobs. Of course, all this I'll, I'll talk about more in the video that's coming. Do you plan on marrying a rich guy or something? You don't have to worry in case you were interested. Not planning on ever actually getting married at all. I do plan on being the rich guy myself. YouTube is my job right now. I'm doing all right. I talk about books and literature, so. I actually already have a job, you silly hillbilly. It is an awful lot of work, um, so you think I'm a hard worker. What I'm gonna recommend for these two is Stoner by John Williams because this is about someone who, yes, also abandons his previous inclination at university to study English literature. And you see him grappling with that decision, where it leads him. This is a very quiet novel um, in moments of greatest difficulty and great trauma, relationship problems, death in the family, like he always, always clings to literature, which has become his job. It does discuss a lot about university politics because he does eventually become a professor of English literature. Very sad, very quiet, but also very inspirational and I think very hopeful actually. So that is stoner. This next one I love. This is a comment I think from my War and Peace vlogs where I read War and Peace. I broke down a lot. I cried a lot. I showed a lot of emotion because I have emotions. Swampy decided to comment. First of all, can we look at this profile picture? Dear Lord. I mean, come on. Anyway, Swampy said, only a mental ill bat films herself crying. Get a hold of yourself, woman. This is my favorite part. You're a nasty little goblin. That is honestly the nicest thing someone's ever said to me. That is the best compliment I've ever gotten. You're a nasty little goblin. I love it. I've always, always, always had aspirations to be a nasty little goblin. Okay, let's chat. So yes, I broke down over War and Peace because um, it affected me, punched me in my soul, made me cry. I cried. I cried on camera. I guess Swampy didn't enjoy that. Um, I think this is supposed to say mentally ill bat. I can't argue with you there. I really wish maybe you knew or you were brought up with the idea that showing emotion is a good thing. Uh, you should you should allow yourself to feel whatever you're feeling. You should allow yourself a safe space to feel that and hopefully be surrounded by people who accept 
your feelings, who can nurture them or just witness them. You should allow yourself to embrace whatever sadness or anger or great joy or happiness you're feeling without feeling like it's something you need to repress or control. I'm not gonna get, I'm really not gonna get a hold of myself because I don't want to get a hold of that, you know, I want to I want to let that go. I want to experience life and emotions and everything it has to offer me, especially in forms of great literature. It's amazing that a book, that words on a page that you hallucinate in your mind can bring out that reaction in someone. Um, I've seen a lot of people, it's like a big thing now, I think, that people um, like film themselves having a breakdown or crying. You don't need to like share it somewhere, obviously. But I think sharing that emotion is important and for me, sometimes it is very therapeutic to be able to see yourself going through something, like have that third person perspective of, okay, I'm going to kind of remove myself maybe a little bit from the situation. Anyway, and honestly on the goblin part, thank you. The book I'm going to recommend is a very emotional book, but it's also one where like men men show their emotions and it's okay and it's it's amazing so please feel free to just cry all the time cry every day have a good cry after this video because it's it, it's important so that is the broken wings by khalil gibran this is a love story it's a tragic love story it's about this man who falls in love with this young woman named selma and her father unfortunately they're quite poor and he has to give her away to i believe another man uh, who is not the nicest and it's about their love affair. It's a tragedy So it does not end very well, but we have throughout both characters just like without remorse without any restraint Just like giving themselves to each other in an emotional way where they don't hold back anything It's very lofty very poetic book and it is very poetic in the way that they express their emotions to one another It's gorgeous in the way that they don't hold anything back. We have our male protagonist being absolutely distraught, depressed, moved to tears, crying all of the time, but also expressing and communicating these emotions, I think, in a very healthy way. Both parties do. That was really nice to see, especially in a classic published in 1912. Um, just gorgeous. Just really, really gorgeous. Uh, the poets and writers are trying to understand the reality of woman, but up to this day they have not understood the hidden secrets of her heart because they look upon her from behind the sexual veil and see nothing but externals. They look upon her through the magnifying glass of hatefulness. So good, five stars, really recommend this one. I have another comment about like books and the taste of books, so something a little bit different. Uh, this is, I think, a comment when I was talking about like, I don't know, my reading taste or something. <laughs> Someone commented, just get rid of all the fantasy, YA, and romance books. Your taste in books at the beginning of your YouTube journey was so much better and amazing before it became very generic. And your taste in books has just reached new lows, I guess. Um, that's rude. People don't get that people have different tastes in books. This is a really basic one, but people like different things. Big news coming out today. This just in, people like different things. I have a lot of comments about people tending to get quite offended for no reason that I sometimes enjoy romance books or sometimes enjoy young adult books, or sometimes enjoy fantasy and sci-fi. Am I gonna stack up a book like Paradise Lost, or War and Peace, or Mrs. Dalloway next to fantasy romance, or a young adult book about a girl time traveling? No. Why would I ever do that? Because that's not the point. Like, these different genres of literature have very different purposes. It's like a balanced meal. I don't know if anyone else has, like, the food pyramid. I, I don't know if Canada dismantled the food pyramid. We used to have the food, the food pyramid in school. It's no longer the food pyramid. At the top, sure. Let's put War and Peace. But, like, you can't have that top pinnacle of the triangle without the base, without the bottom, without the trash, if you want to call it that, because trash is valuable. I say this all the time. Trash is so valuable. I love good trash. Without good trash, first of all, you can't build the base to your pyramid to have the good stuff, the good, cool, beautiful, wondrous literature. This base and like these, the steps of the pyramid, those are just as important for first of all developing your taste for new readers who are just reading for the first time when i was 12 13 14 what do you think i was reading obviously i was reading ya some people seem to have a problem when i still read it now and it's just so weird to me like first of all just let people like what they like why would you ever hate on someone for that unless it's like putting someone in danger it's absolutely bizarre to me but yeah just this idea that like romance is useless as a genre 
young adult is useless as a genre. Because when I read like Shadow and Bone, for example, by Leigh Bardugo, I'm not looking for the same things in that book that I am when I'm reading like The Picture of Dorian Gray. They're just completely different worlds and they exist for different reasons. Entertainment, escapism is so valuable. To be a little spiteful, I am going to recommend a young adult a romance book and a fantasy book. YA, a YA book that is so extremely trash. I enjoy in a really weird way every time I read it is Shatter Me. Holy moly. It's Shatter Me by Tahara Mafi. Uh, this is not great, okay? This kind of sucks, um, but you know what? It's so fun. A romance, I'm gonna recommend a fantasy romance. That's Fortuna Sworn by KJ Sutton. So fun, so addictive, so compulsively readable. This is my favorite fantasy romance series. They each get better and better and better, and it's just good freaking fun. You have fairies, you have werewolves. Uh, you have every single line of like Lucifer's fallen angels populating the earth, and you follow your main character who's a nightmare. She's a nightmare. She's a living embodiment of a nightmare. And then finally for a romance, I'm gonna recommend Get a Life, Chloe Brown, because some of these people commenting, I mean, it says it in the title, so. This is a romance that is really sweet, really cute. Um, I think pretty down to earth and realistic, and I really enjoyed it. And next we have Dante. Dante, thank you for taking the time out of your life. She doesn't look as cute on this video. Shame. First of all, I like how it's not like, that's a shame. I like how it's just straight up shame, you know, like shame on you. You should be ashamed for your appearance. Really weird. I just, I, I just, like what goes on? And I'm like genuinely curious. Dante, if you're watching this, if anyone who's ever commented on someone's appearance in a video, like genuinely, what is going on in your mind? I have, like everyone else, gradients, gradients of cuteness. Did I look like this when I woke up in the morning? No. Do I look like this in real life? No, because camera Emma is also different from like real life Emma. This is just like an image of, of me. Am I gonna look like this tomorrow? No. I'm constantly changing, constantly evolving. And so like, when, I think you have to remember when someone calls you, you know, if someone just straight up calls you ugly or like, you didn't look, you didn't look as cute. You literally never look the same. Like you are always in constant flux, evolution. Like next week, maybe I'm gonna chop off all my hair. Tomorrow, I'm gonna get the biggest pimple over top of my eyebrow. The next week, maybe I'm gonna gain a pound and a half and that'd be cool. You are always changing. You never look the same. You're never the same. But Dante, really, buddy, I really apologize uh, for you that you place that much importance on how someone else looks in a video. Like the stakes, the stakes are high for you because if you click on a video and I don't look as cute as on the other video, guess you can't consume my content. That's That sounds rough for you. book I'm gonna recommend is Phantom of the Opera because it's one of my favorite books and it does deal with someone who unfortunately is abused by every single person he meets because of the way that he looks and in turn this does a lot of really cruel, disgusting, awful things to him, to himself, the way that he thinks about himself and then outwardly of course he um, sees the world, treats the world, treats people in a very different way. The Phantom of the Opera is a ghost story, a love story, a detective novel, a piece of gothic literature. It's it's everything. Like us, you know, this book has, it's just not definable. Like when I read this, I was tracking so many different things um, that this book does, that this book encapsulates, that it talks about. It talks so much about history, about music, about architecture it is constantly changing. You can look at this book from so many different angles and of course it also does um, discuss the very real consequences of someone's life when they are treated the way that they're treated because of the way that they look, because they have a disfigurement or a disability or because they don't look the way that everybody else looks. So very important, one of my favorite books of all time. Glad I got to talk about it again. Thank you, Dante. This one says she's pretty, but you can tell she knows it. That's too bad. Oh man, not people knowing their self-worth and having confidence in themselves. That freaking sucks. I hate when people love themselves, don't you? That's not the comment that you think it is, Michael. I'm gonna recommend If I Had Your Face by Frances Cha. This one talks a lot about the South Korean beauty industry and standards, uh, surgery. It's about people not being happy with the way that they look, the consequences of them deciding to take action upon those feelings, what that brings them. You follow a group of four girls in Seoul and they are finding themselves, but also finding themselves by altering the way that they look. Really important book, really solid, really good, and I think it's a really good 
reply <laughs> to this comment. Maybe I'll just start replying to hate comments with book recommendations. That was the last comment. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. This was really good fun for me. I'd love to do this more often, but like maybe not because then that means that people are saying nasty things to me all of the time, which like, you know, there's got to be some balance in there. But um, I want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you got some good book recommendations. I hope you remember to love yourself, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. And um, if not, people will take the nasty things you say and just turn them into books. Thank you so much to Kinder Beauty for sponsoring today's video. The link is in the description box along with the code and I will see you in my next video. <laughs> Ciao. Do you need to fix it?